Thorpe. Hello. Hello. Uh, reaction from White House insiders. So, as always, we have a lot of uh, rumors about what people are saying inside the White House itself. Uh, we're hearing that uh, their, the staff was taken aback. They were surprised by the fact that Donald Trump came out and had this press conference yesterday and made the comments that he made. We've heard that Gary Cohn, who is a senior administration official, was very frustrated, and the word that was used was disgusted uh, by what Donald Trump had to say. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that's, that's remarkable about this moment is there aren't people out there defending President Trump beyond the white nationalists and the racists that were part of this rally, we're not really hearing people that are actually standing in support of him, including from within the White House. We, our booking team, and they're good, uh, reached out to Republicans of all stripes across the country today. <clears throat> Let's be honest, uh, Republicans often don't really mind coming on Fox News Channel. Uh, we couldn't get anyone to come and defend him here because we thought, in balance, someone should do that. Uh, we worked very hard at it throughout the day, and we were unsuccessful. And of those who are condemning the president's condemnable actions, I've not heard any, any prominent leaders, former presidents, members of the House or the Senate, use his name while speaking in generalities. Uh, I, I will say that Lindsey Graham, the statement from Lindsey Graham, I believe actually did refer to Trump specifically. But yes, you're correct that there, there, there is uh, Paul Ryan, for example, Speaker of the House, made it, issued a statement that addressed it obliquely. The, the former president's Bush did the same thing. They referred to generally these statements about hate. A lot of people are loath to actually uh, address Trump directly. And I think part of that is because the issue at stake here is whether or not racism and hate should be part of the political conversation. And it seems to me that part of what people are focusing on is making that distinction. No, these are not valid political ideas that should be part of this conversation. And in that being the priority for particularly for members of Donald Trump's own party, I think makes some level of sense. There, there are many voices from both the left and the right. It, it seems to be largely nonpartisan today right. that giving these voices a platform some that we've some that we've already seen it from the reporting from your reporting and that of the of the Washington Post is the president understanding this I, I think pretty clearly not. I mean, these what we're talking about here are inherently terroristic organizations. These are organizations that want to get rid of non-white people, that they want to get rid of non-straight, non-Christian people from the United States. They want to instill fear. That is what they do. That's why they march at night with torches. That's why they evoke the symbolism of Nazi Germany. It is very, very clear that that is not something that is part and parcel with anything in American politics. Donald Trump them. He was later uh, uh, cajoled into giving this statement, saying, of course, the KKK is bad. Of course, neo-Nazis are bad. But then in front of that microphone, he revealed again that he agreed with what he'd said on Saturday, that these things are somehow equivalent. And that in and of itself is completely abnormal for an American president and in American politics. We, we, we know that right thinking Americans, as a former colleague would put it, agree with him on that matter. There is no debate. Of, in, in, in the United States society, in the American society, about whether there's a place for neo-Nazis. There, there, there is no debate. There never has been a debate. There was not a debate on Saturday. Right. There was not a debate on Monday. There is not a debate today. And that the president can't more forcefully express this, he certainly condemned them, mm -hmm. but then made this false moral equivalency. Right. Is anyone in the White House, for instance, I believe we have a picture of General Kelly yesterday, the chief of staff, who, as the president, was ad-libbing. He was not scheduled to have this news conference. He was not scheduled. This, this, is, not, this is not the one. I'm talking about from yesterday in Trump Tower, that, the, the picture that is... Okay. Uh, well, I don't see the monitor. There we go. Uh, well, that, that's not the one I'm talking about. You know the picture. Sure. Yeah. With his head down. Right. There, I, from a number of different sources, I heard from, from people, with people within the White House, here it is, uh, with his head down. Is there anyone going to the president? For instance, is General Kelly going to the president and saying, Mr. President, you have to come and set this straight. You have to be, you have to be forceful about this. You must lead in the way former presidents did, Bush and, and Reagan and, and, and Bush 43, Bush 41, Obama and Clinton, all of them. You must come forward. Is anybody in his ear in that way? 
I, I feel very confident that there are people in his ear in that way. But the problem since June 16th, 2015, when he came down that escalator and announced his candidacy for the presidency, the problem has always been that Donald Trump does what he wants to do. And what happened on November 8th when he won the presidential election, despite everyone saying, A, you're not going to win, and B, you're doing the wrong things to win, when he won anyway, I think he saw that as validation, that his own gut instinct go. His gut instinct here says to stand, to, to issue statements that create that equivalence that you were just speaking about, that defend to some extent a group which, we can be very frank, supported his candidacy when he was running for president. So I don't know that anyone could be in Donald Trump's ear, including his family, and say things that would convince him to take a position other than the one he's already taken. They are indefensible. There is no equivalence.